started this Boardroom Forum live series by unpacking how organizations are starting to think differently about workforce risk and proactively manage it. In this episode, we will be discussing the impact that managing or not managing your workforce risk can have on South African organizations. I'm Riante Pidiachi, and today, Matli Duplessis and Bernice Vessels, PwC's workforce and people experts, are joining me to unpack this further. Ladies, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. I think such a relevant topic given the business operating environment today. And Matli, as our workforce uh, platform leader in Africa, let me start with you. So could you tell us or provide us with a view on the workforce risks that South African organizations are currently facing and those important ones that they need to be monitoring right now. It's very interesting that if you look at risk today, it's a lot more interconnected than what it ever was in the past. And it is a result of the mega trends and the impact that it has on organizations today, not only South Africa or Africa, but globally. So today, given the interconnectedness of all of these risk elements, organizations can't have a reactive approach. And that was typically the approach in the past. They have to focus on it in a lot more integrated and proactive manner. So if we look at some examples, in our recent CEO survey, the PwC CEO survey that was conducted in Africa specifically, more than 20% of sub-Saharan CEOs are saying that inclusivity is a risk that they need to monitor going forward. So the whole concept around diversity and inclusion, different perspectives. Another interesting stat is that more than uh, or just under 50% of CEOs are saying that skill shortages will hamper the delivery of their business strategies. And if you think about the impact that that will have on productivity and the war for talent, then it's a very real risk to manage. And similarly so with cybersecurity, also just under 50% um, number of CEOs that's investing in managing data, privacy and cybersecurity. The last concerning stat is um, also just under 50% of CEOs are saying they won't be economically viable in the future if they don't manage their risk properly and turn it into a competitive advantage. And I think very relevant stats and something that obviously a wider group of business leaders, uh, you know, should heed that call mm -hmm. and um, obviously not maybe not employ a reactive approach, probably not the best way to handle it. But mm -hmm. Nice, just bringing you into the picture now, can you tell us what happens if organizations don't proactively manage their workforce risk? Yes, thanks, Rante. I think there's a couple of um, key implications that it can have for an organization and really also depends on the risks that they are facing. Mm -hmm. um, I'll highlight a couple examples that we've seen recently. Um, one of the first ones is actually an increase in costs and reputational damage that organizations are facing. An example of this would be where you have a cybersecurity issue due to employee negligence. Um, that has major implications for organizations from their reputation up to the fact that they now need to implement measures to actually handle this situation. The second uh, example, which is quite important, I think a, a major impact for organizations is the loss in productivity uh, and the impact that that could have on their revenue. Um, so, I think if we think about a couple of years ago, a lot of organizations lost a lot of talent, um, especially their critical skills, but they only dealt with this risk after it happened. They realized, oh, we're losing all our critical skills. Why were they leaving? Uh, what was uh, what was the reasons, um, the key drivers of it? And how are we going to replace these skills? By that time, it's actually too late. You're losing intellect in intellectual property um, and you're actually increasing your cost because you now need to rehire and retrain. Uh, and that leads to a loss in productivity. So if you flip that, what should organizations do to prevent this? They should be thinking proactively. Uh, and that means actually from let's take the, the high attrition uh, example. For that, it's not just good enough to monitor your, your exits. You need to actually monitor things like your engagement of your employees. You need to monitor what's going on in the market. Are we rewarding our employees adequately? All of those 
pieces need to come together to proactively and predictively identify your workforce risks. And it touches on what Marty said of these risks being interconnect interconnected. Uh, it's not just about high attrition, but all of the other factors that impact your workforce. I think what's quite interesting there is that I wonder how many, what the percentage would be if we were to survey business leaders on their view on this interconnectedness. Mm -hmm. I, you know, maybe they approach uh, workforce risk in silos. We don't really know. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a very valuable point that you, you raise here about this interconnectedness. Um, an open question to you both. I just want to further a point you mentioned. Um, you, you said a lot of um, companies, organizations would have lost uh, a big percent or a percentage of their workforce. Is this phenomenon of the great resignation um, slowing down, speeding up? What are we seeing? Because we've mm. stabilized a lot since um, we all shut down because of COVID. So what mm. are we seeing there? I can maybe jump in yeah, mm, as a start, but um, it is going up and down. So at, a, at, at one stage, I think about last year, it was better. Uh, there was less of this great resignation and things stabilized. And then you hear in certain pockets, in certain industries, certain roles, that it's still quite a big um, concern. Uh, I think if you look at your technology space, um, especially in South Africa and Africa, there's a lack of those skills and there's an exit of those skills because it's in such high demand. Um, so it's, it's difficult to say it has stabilized because it, it depends on which area you're actually looking at. Mm -hmm. And in addition to what Bernice has just said, it is not just about people leaving the organization, but it's also about the impact that mm -hmm. they have in the organization. So we talk about burnout, bored out and brain out and the impact that those three elements then have on productivity, delivery of your strategy and the bottom line ultimately. So again, it just proves that your workforce element in the total work for, uh, risk management continuum is, is a critical factor to consider. Mm. Mm. Well, thanks for that, uh, ladies. Uh, Matli, they are obviously organizations that have a better sense of how to handle their workforce risk. Mm -hmm. um, can you give us some examples of where organizations have started to do this and, and are getting it right? It is quite interesting to see the different angles across multiple industries, but let me give you a few examples. So if you look at the financial services industry, that's an industry that has been hit hard from a technology perspective. So it's digitization, digital branches, it's moving towards platform businesses. And as a result of that, you can imagine it's a totally different skill set that will be required in future. And not managing that proactively will have a direct impact on your competitiveness in the market. So big risk from that perspective. And financial services organizations realized it's something that they need to focus on to the extent that they are starting to manage it quite proactively in the form of digital academies um, and so forth. Another example is in the healthcare space where it came through internal audit. So it's the audit function managing enterprise-wide risk management, but realizing that the people element of the enterprise-wide risk management colors in all of those facets. And they have from that angle of started to pull in human capital and the workforce element. And maybe a last one is in um, the consumer market space where retail organizations are making the link between employee skills, satisfactions, ability to do customer um, service in a, in a very professional way and brand reputation. And they are managing it from that angle to connect brand positivity in the market and skill of workforce and the ability to service your customer, specifically from a digital perspective, physical environment, and then also the digital angle that's coming in. Okay. I love that we have at least good examples from various different industries. Mm. So, so it's good that business leaders are obviously adapting to the changing times. Agreed. Yes. Um, mm. Bernice, is there anything you'd like to add? No, I think the, the one thing I would add is as well, and I, I mightly briefly touched on it at, at the end, is the shift from workforce risk and workforce issues just being considered in your HR function mm to actually be considered by your risk function or your internal audit function. So it's elevating the discussion in terms of your workforce, uh, which is the right thing to do. If you think about it, your workforce cost, your workforce is the drivers behind your business. And if you don't pay appropriate attention to it, it can have massive consequences for an organization. 
The point Bernice is raising is really key. Both her and I had a conversation the other day with an organization where human capital teams didn't quite catch on to the importance of using that workforce risk data as a competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. The internal audit team had to bring that awareness and pull them in. So again, human capital teams, a call out to human capital teams then is also to say, is to lift your exposure and vision towards enterprise-wide performance and business acumen, and not just within the, the people um, administrative space. Function, yeah. Great point you raised there. Um, so Bernice, uh, we obviously spoke about not being reactive. Well, that's mm -hmm. a key message coming out of today's discussion. Can you perhaps provide a, a summary of the benefits that proactive, uh, the proactive management of your uh, workforce risk can have for organizations? Yes. Yeah, so I think it's both proactive managing of that workforce risk, but also taking a holistic view on workforce risk. So not just focusing on single elements of your workforce. Um, and that actually can have quite a big advantage to organizations. So we're seeing organizations moving to a position where the managing of risks become, like Martley said, a competitive advantage uh, for them. And it's a strategic enabler. So they're in a position where they can identify key priorities within the organization, within their workforce, that, are, that is actually going to help them move forward, help them reach their strategy. Um, so it's that strategic enabler. The second thing I would also say, it also helps them move faster um, and more impactful in terms of their decision making, because they have this view on what is potentially going to happen in the future from a workforce perspective, and they can already react to that. And then lastly, I think it also promotes that open culture uh, and that risk reward mindset within an organization. Yeah, which is very important yes. as well. <laughs> um, Martley, just to tie things together, if an organization takes a holistic approach to workforce risk, can you tell us what types of questions that will help an organization to answer? Sure, and I think there's a whole list of questions that one should consider. If we look at the PwC Workforce Risk Framework, mm -hmm. there's quite a few slices that makes up the workforce risk element. But a few questions to consider, and if we take it from the top to the bottom, you need, you, you need to ask whether your board, as well as your executive leadership teams, are aligned in terms of your workforce risk management approach. Do they understand it, and do they support it? A second one is around the fact that you need to get the data and the source of your analytics and findings from reliable sources. So do you have the right technology, tools and data to inform those um, aspects? The culture, managing workforce risk in a proactive manner is all around um, do you have the culture that will drive proactive risk management? And then lastly, do you tackle workforce risk management across silos as an integrated whole, or are you still focusing on it department by department? Some key questions you're leaving us with over there. Ladies, this has been such an insightful discussion. Thank you so much. I definitely think points that you've raised will you know, make business leaders rethink how they approach workforce risk, hopefully holistically, and for the better. And thank you to you, our online audience, for tuning in to yet another episode of PwC's Boardroom Forum Live.